representatives is something that will have to be scrutinised in the Scottish Parliament as this legislation makes its way through uh, the various committees and what have you stages that it will have to go through. Uh, but it's, it, but it's, what is, is important here is that family consent is still absolutely crucial in this process despite you know a change that sort of change and this, this new scheme coming in so i asked ian mcleod uh, he's the clinical lead for organ donation in scotland if he could just explain to us in a bit more detail how he would envisage this new scheme working so we, we would still need the, the family's permission to go ahead under the proposed soft opt-out system. A hard opt-out system would allow us to take organs without any checks and balances or without speaking to family and getting that final authorisation from them. But with a soft opt-out system, which is the proposal that, that, we're, that has been looked at, um, we would still need the family's authorisation as that final say-so. But then, you know, this set me thinking, Barry, so if a family can still say no, then actually, does this new scheme take us any further forward? So I asked Leslie Logan from the Organ Donation Service in Scotland if it did, and actually what difference this new scheme she thought would actually make. If someone has made no decision in life, we would have a conversation with the family which is because they have not made a decision, it is assumed or presumed that authorisation would be given. So it would be our intention to continue with this. Families, of course, at that point may raise an objection. And so it's a different starting point to that conversation is what this legislation is going to give you? Yes, it is. It's a different starting point. So when does the Scottish Government think this new scheme will start? Well, they're hopeful that they will get this legis legislation through within the next four years. Um, and they say that this is part of a range of measures. And, and very much what they're looking at here, I think, is to get the public thinking about this seriously um, and not just when somebody in their own family perhaps would need a would need a new kidney or something like that. It's, it's a part of a range of measures really to get us all thinking about what our position on this is. Aileen Campbell is the Public Health Minister. This is about making sure that families are engaged with and also ensuring that conversations happen across the country so that people understand that it's really important to ensure that their intentions are known and understood. And Michael Hanlon today was saying, you know, as far as he's concerned, he's been campaigning for this for a long time, as you can understand, in his position. And he was saying, look, you know, let's face it, once you've gone, you've gone. Your organs are no good to you. You know, give that gift of life to someone else. Aileen, thanks for that. That's our reporter, Aileen Clark. Now, let's catch up with the travel. Well, things starting to look a bit better at Edinburgh Airport after this morning's power failure. They're starting to clear out the backlog, but passengers are still advised to just make sure they check in on time. A fault on a train means the Cordobas 5 service between Glasgow and Queen Street, which was meant to be due into Edinburgh at 10 past 6, has been cancelled. Normal rush hour traffic on most major routes on the roads. And the A986 in Orkney is closed due to a police incident. It's expected to remain closed for some time. That's BBC Radio Scotland Travel. And you're listening to News Drive with Vary Stewart. The time now is 5.33. 92 to 95 FM, 810 medium wave and on digital. BBC Radio Scotland. A little bit later than usual, it's time for news and sport for the borders with Angela Soavi. A five-year regeneration scheme is being launched in Jedburgh. The £1.3 million conservation area regeneration scheme is funded by Historic Environment Scotland, Scottish Borders Council and the private sector, as well as offering funding for building repairs in the town centre. There will also be training, heritage and educational activities. A full-time project officer will be appointed. Similar schemes already operate in Kelso and Selkirk. A man's appeared in private at Jedburgh Sheriff Court in connection with an incident which saw Ettrick Bridge sealed off by police last week. David Reid is charged with malicious mischief by damaging property belonging to another at a house in the village as well as threatening or abusive behaviour. Police, ambulance and fire services were called out on Thursday evening when access routes were blocked off during an alleged standoff. 39-year-old Reid of no fixed abode made no plea. The case was continued for further examination and he was remanded in custody. Two Borders huntsmen accused of breaching Scotland's front fox hunting legislation will receive their verdicts tomorrow. Father and son, 67-year-old John Clive Richardson and 24-year-old Johnny Riley, both members of the Jed Forest Hunt, denied deliberately hunting a fox with dogs on farmland near Jedburgh. Robin Wiley reports. 
Following a lengthy trial at Jedburgh Sheriff Court, the Crown and defence lawyers concluded their closing submissions yesterday afternoon. Deputy Fiscal Fiona Caldwell insisted that the pair, who are based at Abbott Rule near Bonchester Bridge, broke the law at Townfoot Hill on February the 16th last year. She pointed to video evidence of two investigators from the League Against Cruel Sports who secretly filmed two incidents where a fox was pursued by 34 hounds. The fiscal said it hadn't been disputed that the fox was killed that day, despite the final act not being captured on video, although the defence had contested that it was shot by a waiting gunman waiting in a gully, which the law permits. But Ms Caldwell said no shots were heard on the video at the time. She pointed out that a carcass of a fox was found later and there was no evidence of it being shot. But defence lawyer David McKee said the accused men were working within the terms of the law by using the hounds to flush out the fox from cover to waiting guns. He described the defence witnesses as open and transparent and urged Sheriff Peter Patterson to return a not guilty verdict tomorrow. A Coldstream man who threatened members of another family in the town has been fined £315. 34-year-old Michael Ledgerwood admitted behaving in a threatening or abusive manner in Hillview on Sunday, April the 9th. Jethro Sheriff Court heard there was a history between the two families, both described as dominating. Ledgerwood had gone to the house to speak to a member of the family about a previous incident, but neighbours heard his threats. Sheriff Kevin Drummond said, whatever else is going on, the rest of the community do not have to put up with it. A Kelso shoplifter has been placed on a night-time home curfew for the next two months. Roderick Kennedy pleaded guilty to stealing a pile of shirts worth £414 and £12 worth of steaks from two local shops last month. Jedburgh Sheriff Court heard none of the goods were recovered. 34-year-old Kennedy, said to be well known for shoplifting, also admitted possessing heroin. He was placed on a community payback order with supervision, told to engage with addiction services and must remain at home between 9pm and 7 in the morning. Now it might all only be the end of June, but NHS Borders is already preparing for winter. The organisation's drawing up detailed plans to ensure they cope with their busiest time of the year. Here's Richard Gordon. Pressure on health services and hospital beds is generally worst during the coldest months, and that's without any major infection or flu outbreak. So the Scottish Government now requires health boards to come up with a whole system winter plan. NHS Borders is will be signed off at their October board meeting, but board members were shown the draft proposals last week. There will be more flu vaccinations, more information to help people help themselves, and better support for those with conditions such as chronic lung disease. Collaboration with the ambulance service and charities, and enhanced health and social care staffing over Christmas and New Year. Generally, all but essential hospital admissions will be avoided. People should be cared for at home. But if someone has to go in, delays in patient flow should be minimised. That is, they should be treated quickly and discharged as soon as possible. In football, Berwick Rangers have been drawn away to Kilmarnock in round one of the Iron Brew Cup. The tie at Rugby Park will be played on the 15th or 16th of August. Meanwhile, the Weejars officially get their pre-season activities underway with an open day on Saturday. Proceedings kick off with a training session at 11am, then a match between the first team and the under-20s at 2 Berwick manager John Coughlin has added three players to his squad in the meantime. 17-year-old Hearts midfielder and defender Oliver Fleming, who's 18, has been signed from Socky Juniors. Now, let's have a look at the border's weather. It's going to be rotten, but uh, here's Christopher Blanchett. Despite the cloud today, it's been reasonably dry with your brighter moment. However, changes on the way as rain returns. This evening, cloud and wet weather spreads in across all parts, persistent and heavy at times. Freshening northeast winds too, giving a cool feel with lows of 7 to 9 Celsius. Tomorrow will bring a disappointing day of weather for late June. Thursday is dull, wet and windy. Rain heavy at times, especially during the morning, feeling chilly in the fresh to strong northeast wind as well. BBC Radio Scotland weather for the borders. Disappointing then, not rubbish, and maybe some farmers will like it. More from the borders at half past six tomorrow morning. On BBC Radio Scotland. Now, as we've been hearing throughout the programme, Edinburgh Airport is still getting back to normal after a power cut this morning grounded planes and delayed thousands of passengers. The outage started at around 9am and lasted for 50 minutes. So let's hear if the impact's continuing. Simon Calder, travel editor of The Independent, has been following developments for us. So what went wrong? 
Well, just picture the scene. There you are, busy old morning at Scotland's busiest airport. The power suddenly goes off. All the checking systems fail, of course. The security checkpoints lose the electricity on which their machines all depend. And arriving passengers can't be processed because barriers don't open, doors don't unlock, and so on. Um, the airport tells me that the power supply failure involved a high-voltage cable and that it had also somehow disabled a backup system that's supposed to be there for resilience. As you say, it was only 50 minutes, but you can't, at an airport, unfortunately, just pick up as though nothing's happened. So, what were the immediate effects and has everyone got where they need to be? Oh, uh, I fear not. Certainly not yet. Um, thousands of passengers, of course, were delayed. EasyJet, Flybe, Ryanair all affected. The 1040 flight to Stansted was over two hours late, for example. Now, Edinburgh says there are no actual cancellations or diversions, but that doesn't mean that people weren't very, very upset because of all the connections, of course. Um, British Airways to Heathrow at five past ten, um, that was two hours late. Um, KLM to Amsterdam out at, due out at 11, 90 minutes behind schedule, getting to the Dutch capital, also delays to Paris. That's an awful lot of people with missed connections. And as you've been reporting, the delays are continuing. Just an example, Flybe to Shetland due out just before 6pm tonight. That's going to be an hour late. Though, of course, not all of these delays are directly attributable to, to the um, power supply problem. So are passengers entitled to compensation? Well, th there's a duty of care, and that uh, it depends. Uh, that's that's it. Uh, doesn't matter what caused the delay. So, um, EU passenger rights rules stipulate that airlines must provide meals and accommodation uh, to people, and that will certainly be the case for a lot of people who miss their connections onwards uh, around the world. Um, but they will not qualify for the compensation of anything upwards of 250 euros because the airlines just say extraordinary. Service circumstances and they certainly were extraordinary um, and so therefore lots of people very upset the airlines deeply out of pocket and Edinburgh Airport rather embarrassed by the whole thing and promising me it's investigating it's going to try and make sure it never happens again. Simon Calder the travel editor of The Independent thank you for that. Now the deadline for EU farm payments to be paid will be missed again, the Scottish Government's confirmed. 90% will be made on time, but problems continue with the IT system. The Rural Affairs Secretary also faced questions about how much he and the First Minister knew about an extension to the EU deadline when they appeared in Parliament. Our political correspondent...